So on the next slide, let's have a look at this. I am multiplying two complex numbers together. Now when you multiply numbers in polar form, when you multiply numbers in polar form, you do something to the moduli and you do something to the arguments. What did you do to the moduli? You multiply. You multiply the mods. So there they are, right there. So when I multiply them, I'm just going to get mod z, mod w. Okay, so I've multiplied the mods. What do I do to the arguments? I add them. So you can see, here's one argument and here's the other one. When I add these together, I'm going to get theta minus 5. Huh. That's a good sign. That's a good sign that we're headed in the right direction. Okay. So I've got here cos of theta minus 5. Right? That's the sum of those angles. Plus I sine of theta minus 5. I think I need one more bracket. There we go. Okay. So I've multiplied the first pair, they've come together, which thankfully for me has made enough space on this line that I can do the next one over here. Right? Again, I'm going to multiply the mods, add the arguments. Right? Coincidentally, or not, I'm going to get mod z, mod w again. And then what's the argument for the new complex number going to be? The product. 5 minus theta, very good, because you can see that's positive and that's negative, it's reversed. Okay? So let's write that down. 5 minus theta. 5 minus theta. Okay, now this is really good, it's very promising. Let's pause and think back, where are we headed? Where are we going? We want, uh, ooh, look, we've got mod z, mod w's, we've got a few of them flying around, thumbs up. I've got theta minus phi. Now we noticed that these looked good, and then we computed these and noticed, huh, they're backwards. Okay. So these I'm going to leave where they are. I'm going to muck around with these. How can I muck around with them, adjust them, so that I can get them in the right, facing the right direction, in the right order? What would you suggest that I do? Okay, so the first thing I can do is pull this guy, right, or this product rather, out the front because I know it's going to be out the front eventually, so let's do that. Uh, mod z, mod w, right, and then I'm going to do a big, huge square bracket, okay, and then all this other stuff, I'll just highlight it, this other stuff is what gets left behind when I factorize. Do you agree with that? Because that's a good step. Now I'm going to write this part here, the first blue bit. I'm going to leave this as it is because you remember the angles are in exactly the right order that I want. Okay, let's have a look. What are we going to do here? If I wanted this to be theta minus phi instead of phi minus theta, what could I do with it? Hmm. Now I'm going to pull our memory back to a trick that we used when we were manipulating cos and sine. We were doing another proof, right? Because cos and sine are not just any functions, they are particular functions. They have symmetry built in, right? They are odd and even functions. Which one's odd and which one's even? Okay, good. Cos is even. Maybe you want to even jot this down for yourself. This guy is even. And this guy is odd. Right? So what that tells me is that for an even function, f of x and f of negative x are the same, right? Because that's why you've got this symmetry like this. Okay? So I can just replace that guy with, uh, oops, that's a minus, sorry, watch out for that one, proof's not going to work if we don't do that. I can just replace it with that, because cos is an even function. I'm going to say that in a second once I finish writing my line, okay? So you can see what I've done. I can just switch those angles around because cos is even. What am I going to have to do here? Keep in mind there's a negative sign here, so what am I going to write here again? Oh, I was just going to say, do you... Okay, yeah, very good. So I've actually got two negatives here. So I'm going to write the first one, which is already there, minus. And then I'm going to replace this thing with what I should replace with since sine is odd, right? Which is minus i sine theta minus phi. Remember the reason I'm doing this? It's to get the angles in the right order, okay? Uh, let's see, have I got the right number of brackets? I think I want this to be a big square one because I'm finished. Okay, do you see what I've done? So I should justify why I've done that, why I've done this switch. And the reason will be, I guess I'll leave it blue since uh, I wrote it. Since cos x is even and sin x is odd. Okay, that's the reason I can replace this. And now we're kind of on the home stretch. 
Have a look at what you've got. Have a look. What's going to happen to those cosine terms? They're gone, right? See so this guy and this guy. By the way, I recommend when you're doing this, when you've got lots of cancelling, whether it's cancelling on the numerator and denominator or cancelling positives and negatives, I highly recommend you underline those terms rather than crossing them out because it's clear I'm combining them, but as a marker, I can still read what you've written. It's not like this has just like been erased. I can see how you're combining them. Okay, uh, Okay, that's good. What about the signs? What's going to happen to those? Yeah, I'm going to get two of them, aren't I? Because you've got I sign and then you've got a double negative here, I sign. Okay, so let's write this all out. Since there's two of them, I'm going to have mod Z mod W times, okay, let's have a look, 2I sine theta minus 5. Boy, that simplified down a lot, didn't it? Okay, so even though this looks gross to write out, it was just temporary until we could do some work on it. This is a proof, so I just need to do one more thing before I get to here. How would you rephrase this thing to make it very obvious? Four I and Yeah, pull out a factor of four, pull out a factor of four, which will leave you with a half in there. Does that make sense? So I'm gonna write uh, the four out the front. I guess I'll also write the I out the front because the area, the area doesn't have an I in it, does it? It shouldn't because it's a real number. So I'll write the I out the front, so I've taken that guy out. That leaves me with uh, a half, mod z, mod w, sine, theta, minus phi. And I've run out of space on my whiteboard, but conveniently, I have already written the result I'm going to end with. Okay, so that will be your final line. What do you think? How'd your brain go as you went through that? Okay. Um, did you notice that a lot of this was, well, not a lot of it, but significant parts of this were two unit and extension one. That was two unit. I mean, I know we've dressed it up in extension two language, but it's just the area of triangle. Um, what about in here? There was stuff with just like odd and even functions. Uh, other times you'll see um, tree expansions, which again, you've learned from extension one. So it's combining all of those with stuff like uh, a conjugate. How did that work? What about real and imaginary bits? Yeah. 